Birds are endlessly fascinating creatures. They live on every continent on Earth, in virtually every environment. They're also one of the most varied of organisms on the planet. That Australasian pipit that I've just been looking at couldn't be more different from an ostrich roaming the plains of Africa. And that's only one comparison out of many that we could make that highlight the mind-blowing diversity of birds in all their forms. In this three-part Birding Today video series, we'll be exploring exactly how birds are arranged or classified into different groups. In biology, this is known as taxonomy, the classification of living and extinct organisms based on shared characteristics. Another way to put it is the process of classifying animals and plants into groups within a larger system, according to their similarities and differences. Before we jump in, I should note that avian taxonomy is a complicated and often messy business, and there are many layers and angles from which to discuss the topic. I will do my best to keep the information in this video series simple and clear, whilst also exploring the complex and different ways in which we classify birds biologically. In this first video of the series, we'll mostly be focusing on the taxonomic ranks of domain, kingdom, phylum, subphylum, and class. Welcome to Bird Taxonomy Explained, part one, domain to class. Here in northern New South Wales, the diversity of birds is truly impressive. I've just spotted a brown cuckoo dove high up in this tree, and earlier on I was lucky enough to also spot a wampu fruit dove, one of my favourite species. Let's take a closer look at these two birds. Right now, we are looking at two different species. In biology, a species is the basic unit of classification, the basic taxonomic rank of an organism. In other words, a species is the most basic category in the system of taxonomy, although there are sometimes different subspecies that exist under one species, but we will look at this later in the series. Another way to define a species is a group of organisms that share a genetic heritage and are able to interbreed and to create offspring that are also fertile. Basically, this means that this wampu fruit dove only reproduces with other wampu fruit doves, and this brown cuckoo dove only reproduces with other brown cuckoo doves. However, there are cases in which different species can and do interbreed, resulting in hybrids, but we will also explore this later in the series. I realise this first video is not principally dedicated to the species classification, but it's a critical aspect of taxonomy, and one that we need to be familiar with if we're to understand avian taxonomy. That being said, let's now zoom out and look at the broader structure of the avian taxonomic system. All birds belong to one single biological class, the class Avis, which simply means birds in Latin. Birds are warm-blooded vertebrates that are in fact feathered theropod dinosaurs, making them the only known living dinosaurs. They are characterized by feathers, toothless beaked jaws, a high metabolic rate, and of course, the laying of hard-shelled eggs. Other features birds possess is a four-chambered heart and a strong yet lightweight skeleton. There are approximately 10,824 bird species in the world, and each and every one of them, including that comb-crested jacana that I've been looking at, belong to the class Avis. But where does the class Avis fit in to the whole taxonomic structure? Well, let's start as far back as we can go. In short, birds are a form of life, and all life is categorized into three taxonomic ranks, or three domains. Archaea, Bacteria, and Eukarya. All animals are eukaryotic, which means that their cells have a nucleus enclosed within a nuclear envelope. So for the purposes of this video, we are only interested in the domain Eukarya. The next taxonomic rank after domain is Kingdom. 
There are five or six different kingdoms, depending on sources, but since birds are animals, they fall into the kingdom called Animalia. Then, below the kingdom, we have the Phylum, of which there are approximately 31 in Animalia. But again, for our purposes, we are only concerned with the Phylum Chordata. We know that birds are vertebrates, and all vertebrates can be grouped into the subphylum Vertebrata. And finally, this is where we then arrive to class Avis, alongside the other classes of Reptilia, Mammalia and Amphibia, and a few others that are a little harder to pronounce. I have barely scratched the surface here, and there is far more to discuss and dissect about this topic, such as clades and superclasses, for instance. But I hope this gives you a general idea of how birds fit in with all other life forms, taxonomically speaking. So that's how we arrive to the class Avis, the biological class to which all birds belong. But what else do we know about birds? What characteristics do all birds have? And are there some characteristics that some birds have, but others don't? The Andes foothills in central Chile. Here, the majesty of birds is truly unmissable. Soaring high up on the thermals is an Andean condor, a species reflective of the enormity of the mountain chain it calls home. One thing is clear, it's a master of the air. Down by the coast, the black vulture, a relative of the Andean condor, also uses flight to patrol the coastline for carrion. In a nearby coastal wetland, black skimmers use their aerial ability to feed, skimming their beaks through the water, waiting to snatch an unlucky fish close to the surface. Most birds can indeed fly, but some species are flightless, like the well-known ostrich or any species of penguin, for example. Other birds, such as the great horned owl, are also powerful flyers, but they spend the day roosting, waiting until darkness falls to become active. Of course, birds can also produce amazingly complex and varied sounds. Their calls and their songs are some of the most well-known sounds of the natural world, and in any natural environment on Earth, the sound of a bird is never too far away. All birds are linked through a set of very specific characteristics. They're warm-blooded, egg-laying, feathered vertebrates. And most birds, of course, can fly. Thanks to their strong yet lightweight skeleton and toothless beak jaws, which are also lightweight. But for all these fascinating shared features, it's the differences and contrasts between birds that really illustrate the magnificence of these creatures. So, how do we specifically categorize birds within the class Avis? Well, that's what we'll be looking at in the next program of Birding Today. I'm Guillaume Durig, and I'll see you then. <laughs>